Okay, just pretend to talk in the mic. Perfect. Uh, and we like to say Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. It is a joy to be with you this morning in worship. Uh, for those of you who are here, it is lovely to see all of you. And uh, the peace of Christ be with you at home as well on this Resurrection Sunday. Oh, it's going to be a fun day. We've got lots of stuff going on. Thanks to those who are helping to lead worship this morning on the organ, of course, is Nancy Slezak. Our technical director this morning is Kyle Neville. Our liturgist this morning is Marsh Miller. Our acolyte this morning is Jacob Miller. No relation, but good job. Our prelude this morning is uh, a poem. We've been doing poems all throughout Lent. This poem is written by the Reverend Sarah Speed and is performed by Chad Provident. And we have um, two pieces of special music today. Uh, of course, by our handbell choir under Nancy's direction. And we also, hiding behind me, have a trumpeter, Alyssa, uh, and it is a joy to have her with us this morning as well. Thank you to all of you who provided Easter flowers. They are beautiful. If you would like to take yours home following the service, please do so. Uh, the, in addition to all the Easter flowers, the chancel flowers were given with love by Susan Catanzarito in honor of the risen Christ. Perfect. On the communion table, the larger vase of flowers is in memory of Bonnie Bolton. It's from uh, her funeral earlier this week, and so we give thanks for her life and for her witness to the resurrection. And the pink rose on the communion table is in honor of Katie Hall and her baptism today. So feel free to take that when you go home, too. Uh, you hopefully have seen the butterfly up here. There's also one out front. So if you didn't come in the front door, that's the bigger one. You can see the shadow right there. <clears throat> Thank you to all of you who contributed to these art projects. They ended up looking really neat. So thank you for that. Uh, you will see in your pews that there are some pictures of eggs and also some colored pencils. And, and kids, hey, listen, listen up. So we're doing an Easter egg hunt during church today, okay? So, but listen, listen. So on, on their sheets of paper, there's not enough for everybody because not everyone likes to color. It's fine. But if you want to, uh, each egg has a word underneath it. And if you hear that word, then you can color in the egg. And if you complete your page, kids, if you complete your Easter egg hunt, you find all six words, we have prizes. Grown-ups, you get the satisfaction of knowing that you completed six words. <laughs> so feel free and have fun and color and enjoy worship this morning. Oh, now everybody's looking. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like the colors you got, just swap with your neighbors. It's fine. Um, the church office will be closed tomorrow, so all of our church staff can get a well-deserved nap. So if you need anything, it'll have to wait until Tuesday. Uh, session will be meeting, a reminder, on Tuesday evening, not tomorrow, Tuesday evening at 645. Uh, if you are interested in the next adult's night out, what's the date for it? 18th, on the 18th. Uh, if you are interested in attending, please see Diane and let her know. Um, there aren't reservation forms, but if you can let her know, that would be very helpful in planning. It's uh, the 18th at 5.30 at the Monroe Hotel. All adults are welcome. 
And you can still sign up next week, too, so you can pray about it if you're not sure. Next Sunday, I hope to see many of you back here in worship. The Sunday after Easter is a day we call Holy Humor Sunday, and at Hill Church, we do jokes and jammies, which means you are welcome to come to worship in your church-appropriate jammies, and we um, will tell jokes, and there will be a time for sharing your church-appropriate jokes uh, during worship, and we will celebrate the joy of Easter next Sunday. Are there any other announcements to lift up this morning? Hearing none, then let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Lost and Found Mary wept, standing in the garden, soft dirt under her feet. Sun still tucked away, sleeping under the horizon. The other disciples left, but Mary stayed. Mary wept, shoulders shaking, tears running down her face. She said, they have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they put him. But here's what Easter taught me. If you think you've lost God, If it feels like heaven has slipped through the cracks. If you feel like the night will never end. Then know, there is no hide and seek with the divine that doesn't end in you being found. Stay still. Keep breathing. God is closer than you think. Please rise in body or spirit as we let us join together on a responsive call to worship. What are you looking for? We seek the light before dawn, a reason to hope. What are you looking for? We seek joy after grief and flowers after winter. What are you looking for? We seek a place to belong. We seek the Messiah. Look no further. Love is alive. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. Let us join together in our unison opening prayer. God of the resurrection, we joyfully gather this morning as a community of believers to greet one another with amazing news. Christ is risen. Love is victorious. You have given us new life. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love to make us a new creation. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Amen.
The joy of this Easter Sunday reminds us of God's resurrecting power. Let us take time now to confess all that turns us toward death so that we can know the grace of new life through Christ by joining together in our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, when we hide away in tombs of death, lead us into life. When we cower in our fears and regret, encourage us with your mercy and your grace. Help us embrace your love and live in your risen presence so that we might claim the life you offer. In hope and joy, we pray. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, do not dwell on your wounds any longer, for Christ has risen to heal you. He has risen to forgive you. He has risen to change us all and to bind us together. Christ has risen to forgive us. Know this and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us now take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another. Those of you who are here in person, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well.
already up here. I don't know if we have any left. If we have any of our young friends at home, you can come a little closer. Now, you all noticed, as soon as you got up here, you noticed something weird, right? What's, yeah. Yeah. So we had to, we had to move the, um, the caterpillars because we had to put the flowers up here. And look what happened. It looks like they escaped. Looks like they escaped. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> you may remember, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, six weeks ago, we, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, don't get too close. So six weeks ago, we put, you can, you can come up if you want. We put little caterpillars in their um, chrysalises, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what kind of caterpillars they were? Uh, don't touch it. All I look caterpillars. Yep. It looks more like gummy worms. They kind of looked like gummy worms, but they weren't. They were real caterpillars. And we put them in their chrysalises. You don't maybe you weren't here that day. Yeah. And when we when we put them in there, there was a certain word that we could not say. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah? Say it. Go ahead and say it. Alleluia. Yeah, the cool thing is on Easter we can say that word again. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So why don't we all say it together? Alleluia! Very exciting. So we had to move the caterpillars, and they all like came out. They're empty now. So that we hope not. Like maybe they're just blending in, and they're like, "All right, guys, we're gonna attack in like three, two, attack!" It wouldn't be Easter if we didn't get dive bombed by butterflies, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, I haven't looked in here yet. Should we look in here and see? Yeah, I think we should check. Okay. One, two, hold three. on, hold on. Oh, I oh. already feel like I, I saw something. Here. You saw something? Don't I look. Saw Don't look. I saw something. Okay. Can you count? Oh, 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 oh. Can you count down with me? Okay, you're going to want to move your faces back. I promise you. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Okay. Can you count down with me? I, I already Nine. know what it was. Nine, Nine eight, seven, six, five, four. Butterflies on Easter. They are pretty, yeah. They're rubber bands. I can show you later. So we use um, butterflies on Easter because they're pretty, because they're colorful, and because they are a symbol of new life. So why do we celebrate Easter? Like what happened? What happened? Christ was resurrected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the day that Jesus came back to life. So Jesus um, died, he was killed, and he went in a tomb, kind of like a caterpillar going into a cocoon or a chrysalis. And then on Easter, he was risen. He came back to life, like these butterflies emerging out of the beautiful cocoon. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Why is there a 200-piece puzzle? Um, to make the butterflies work well. Yeah. We had to do a lot of practice. Okay, so um, we, uh, you can have some of these butterflies after worship, okay? We don't need them flying around during church, okay? There's plenty of them in here, so can you help me put them all back in here for right now? Put them back in here right now, and then we can have them after church. Yeah, some of them still need to be... Uh, Oh, that one, one more flight? Yep, one more flight. It's going to be a good one. This one, too. I'm just going to charge Whoa! Okay, can you help me put these I, in here, too? I charged it up for about, like, five minutes. Oh, don't break it. If you spin it too much, it'll, good, it'll break. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. All right. Oh, thanks, Jackson. Why, why, why didn't it fly? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right, can you pray with me, please? Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for coming back to life and for loving us. 
Help us share your joy with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so don't run away. Don't run away. So don't forget to do your Easter egg. Your Easter egg hunt, okay? Um, and when you get your prize, you can get some butterflies too, okay? Okay, but don't go back to your seat. If you could, could you go back and sit in the front pew there? And I'm going to invite Katie's family forward. Katie can stay up here. All right, you can stand over here. Miss Ellen cleaned the bowl just for you so that it wouldn't be dirty. You'll ask her later what, you found, what she found in there. Jesus Christ said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Apostle Paul said that there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the session, I present Hold on. Cadence. Sorry again. On behalf of the session, I present Cadence Lucinda Hall, beloved child of Christy Davis and Doug Hall, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter the covenant. Do you know what a covenant is? It's a promise. We enter the promise that God established in Jesus Christ. Within this covenant, within this promise, God gives us new life strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So, questions first to Christy and Doug. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say we do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Amen. Do you desire that Cadence be baptized? Do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your children? If so, say we do. Amen. Beautiful. All right, Katie, I have some questions for you. Okay, can you answer them loudly so everyone can hear? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus loved you? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Do you want to learn more about Jesus with the help of your family and this church? Yes. Good. Do you want to be baptized and to be celebrated today as a member of God's family and of this congregation? Yes. Yes, perfect. A few weeks ago, I gave Katie a book about baptism. And in the book, it said that once you're baptized, you become a member of God's family. And she asked me, I thought I was already a member of God's family. And I said, yeah, you are. If I were to write that book, I would say that you are celebrated as a member of God's family, right? Yeah, because you are already loved and a part of God's family. So now you all are young friends. This is why I asked you to stay up here. Today we celebrate with your friend Katie that she's getting baptized. Isn't that exciting? She's making the choice to learn more about God's love for her. When we are part of a congregation, when we are part of a community, we remember that we are all God's children and that we are called to love and care for one another. So I have some questions specifically for you all, for the kids. Okay, so when you answer these questions, 
you're making promises to Katie and you're making promises to God, all right? Will you help Katie remember that God loves her and we love her? If you will, say, we will. We will. Beautiful. Will you grow and learn alongside her, serving together and teaching one another? If you will, say, we will. We will. Beautiful. Will you celebrate her today with high fives, hugs if she wants them, and shouts of joy? If you will, joyfully say, we will. Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Cadence by word and deed, with love and prayer? If so, say, we do. We do. Will we encourage her to know and follow Christ and be faithful members of his church? If so, say, we will. Please rise in body or spirit as we affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven heaven and earth, earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. You don't sit. You don't get to sit. Do you know where, I, where we got this water? From the sink. Yeah. Downstairs. Yeah. Is, it any, is there anything special about this water? Yeah, because it's in a church. Because it's in a church. That does make it special. If you wanted, you could just take this pitcher and drink it. That's just like water from your house. Do you know what makes it special? What? When we pour it in here. Does it look better now? Yeah. Does it? It's still just water. You can touch it. You can touch it. We thought about putting ice in it, but thought you might not like that. <laughs> no. What makes this water special is what it symbolizes. It symbolizes God's love for you. It symbolizes the washing away of everything that you do wrong. Yeah. And it symbolizes that you are a member of God's family. You already are, but we're just celebrating that today. All right? All right. Will you please join me in prayer? We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish us and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life for which water is necessary. Throughout history, you have revealed yourself through water. Relationships formed at wells, freedom discovered through the parting of the sea, thirst quenched by water flowing from a rock, sin and evil washed away, spirit-filled baptism in the river. We thank you for water. We are grateful for access to clean, life-giving water that sustains us. And we praise you for the waters of baptism. Just as the Spirit was revealed at the baptism of our Lord Jesus, breathe your Spirit into all who are gathered here, especially Katie and her family, and into all your creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away our sin. Satisfy our thirst with your living water, that we may have the power to do your will, the energy to serve you with joy, and the desire to forever celebrate the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right, you ready? Yeah. This is the part where I splash the water in her face, right? No? (laughs) Okay. Okay, lean over a little bit. 
I'll try to not get it in your eyes, but no promises, okay? <laughs> Lean over as far as you can. Okay. Cadence Lucinda Hall, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Child of the covenant, you have been marked and sealed as God's beloved child and as a member of this community. Congratulations. Yay. Will you join me once again in prayer? O oh Lord, support Cadence by your Holy Spirit. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of guidance and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the respect of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Cadence Lucinda Hall, Katie, you have been baptized in the name of the triune God, that means the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you have been received into one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that means you're a member of Jesus' church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are a member of the household of God, and you share with us, share with everybody in the ministry of Christ and the priesthood of all believers, that means you can talk to God if you want. With joy and thanksgiving, we celebrate you today. Amen. Let's give her one more round of applause. Here is your baptism certificate. Now, you better love it, because Ellen and I had to work so hard on this <laughs> to get it right. Hopefully I do. Yeah, you will. And this is a gift for you. I'm going to ruin the surprise. It's a cross to put on your wall, okay? And every time you look at that cross, I want you to remember this day and remember all of these people who have made a promise to love you and care for you, okay? All right, congratulations. Bye, Dad. Let us pray. Divine Redeemer, bearer of life, open us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us and turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. Amen. Our first gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 10, from the Common English Bible. This is the, this is the discovery of the empty tomb. Listen now for God's word to us. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were saying, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We pick up now right where we left off in the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18, also from the Common English Bible. This is Mary's experience of the risen Christ. Listen again for God's word to us. Mary stood outside near the tomb, crying. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this Easter morning. We thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together to celebrate such joy. Open our ears to your voice, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These past six weeks, we've been on a journey of seeking. Like those we've read about in scripture, such as Nicodemus, the Samaritan woman at the well, Ezekiel, and even Jesus himself, we also find ourselves seeking many things, like clarity, connection, wonder, justice, and balance. Throughout the turbulence of these past few years, many of us have been asking big questions about our lives and our faith. And we've been asking some of these questions on our journey of seeking here. To whom will we listen? How do we begin again? Where are we headed? And in every question we've asked, a picture of Jesus has been forming in our minds. Who is he? What is he capable of? What does he want? And the image that we have created of Jesus determines how we perceive his actions and his words this holy week. All of our questions and all of our seekings have brought us to this point, to an empty tomb, to a blood-soaked cloth lying on a stone slab, to distraught friends grieving the execution of their leader, their teacher, their messiah, All of our questions and all of our seeking have brought us to this moment, not a place of peace, but to intense feelings of fear, anger, confusion, and guilt. Our seeking has led us to Mary, holding solitary vigil at the tomb. Even in the pre-dawn darkness, she sees that the stone which sealed the tomb is gone as is the body that once laid inside. Mary is in shock at grief, is in shock and grief at the death of Jesus. She is frightened at the sight of two angels in the tomb. And if you've been worshiping here for a while, you remember the sight of angels is terrifying. They're scary. Mary is in distress because she does not know where Jesus' body has gone. 
Just as we create our own images of who Jesus is, the Reverend Danielle Schroyer writes that as Mary weeps at the tomb, the picture she has formed in her mind is one of tragedy. Jesus has died, and in her mind, now someone has gone so far as to steal his body. We see this as she speaks in an almost accusatory tone to both the angels and to the man she thinks is a gardener. I envision her as frantic, unable to comprehend just about everything that's happening. Her thoughts are so all over the place that the one she is looking for, the one who she has followed and committed her life to, is unrecognizable to her. The one she supposes to be the gardener speaks directly to her, asking, who are you looking for? And she still doesn't see him. In the haze of grief, Mary can only see what is right before her, or in this case, what is not right before her. It is only when Jesus calls her by name that the veil is lifted and she beholds the resurrected Christ. The Reverend Denise Anderson writes that this is because Jesus' address to her comes from a deeply intimate place, from so deep, from such an intimate place, that it is the only thing strong enough to pierce through her grief. Sometimes the things we seek are right in front of us, like the glasses on our face, and we still miss them. Sometimes the answers to our questions are so obvious that we miss them completely. Whether due to ignorance or hardness of, hardness of heart, resistance or fear, far too often we put up barriers that block us from finding what we seek. Jesus' question to Mary, who are you looking for, is an important question for us, too. On this Easter morning, who or what are you looking for? Why have you come to the tomb? Why have you come to worship? What kind of Jesus do you seek? What veil needs to be lifted so that you can recognize God's resurrection, not just here, but everywhere. Reverend Schroyer writes that the world heard the glad tidings of Easter because Mary's answer to Jesus' question before she even knew she was talking to Jesus revealed her wholehearted love of him. Beyond teacher, beyond healer, beyond savior. For Mary, she says, Jesus truly became fully God and fully human. She loved all of him because through him, she had experienced a love that embraced all of her. That all-encompassing, all-inclusive, unconditional love was acted out on the cross. And Jesus not only embraced Mary, but he embraces all of us, too, just as we are. So who are you looking for today? Is it the Jesus you want or the Jesus you need? Is it the Jesus of your own imagining, the one you have created in your mind? Or is it the fully human, fully divine Messiah and Savior who loved us through death, into new life. May the Jesus you seek this day and every day be the one whose love made us whole, the one who died our death to bring us new life, the one who overcame death and rose again to show us the way, and may we never fail to recognize him. Happy Easter. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing our response, uh, verse 1 of hymn 108, Christ is Alive.
In the spirit of the first believers, we are called to share our goods in common and contribute to the needs of the poor with glad and generous hearts. We do this through our tithes and offerings to the church. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances. Drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise now in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. God of the empty tomb, your grace astounds us and your generosity fills us to overflowing. Accept our offerings as signs of our gratitude and bless our work on Christ's behalf. May we love as Christ loved and serve as Christ served. Call us forth into our world, guided by Christ's Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> As we prepare to turn to God in prayer today, we share our joys and our concerns so that we can be uh, in prayer for and with one another. Uh, this morning I have a message uh, from Koku and his family. Many of you know him uh, in the relationship that we've had ministry partners uh, in Ghana for many years. And he says, we send you all Easter greetings with love and goodwill. May you live long in the Lord. May the blood of Jesus fill you with all joy and happiness in this season. God bless you from Koku and family. So happy Easter all the way from Ghana. Today we also give thanks, of course, uh, for Katie Hall and for her baptism and uh, for her family that has made this choice to nurture her in love. Every baptism special. Katie's my girl. Love her. So I'm, I'm, it was an honor to do her <laughs> baptism today. Uh, we also, it is wonderful to see David Brady here. We have been praying for you, and it is so good to see you here this morning. We also give thanks uh, for months. We have been praying for Beverly Horton, Bob Kennedy's sister. She uh, had West Nile virus and fell ill right after Thanksgiving. And yesterday, she ate her first food by mouth. And so it's been a long time, mashed potatoes. We give thanks to God for mashed potatoes and um, for modern medicine and for healing. We continue to pray for her. Uh, her insurance is getting ready to kick her out. And so um, they're trying to find a place for her to go next. But prayers for uh, the Easter miracle, as Bob called it. We do also have a number of concerns uh, to lift up. Uh, we remember all those we love who are living with cancer, so many people in our lives. And we add to that list Carolyn Stutz, who has been diagnosed with cancer as well. So we pray for those going through treatments, those who are seeking testing. We also lift up Edna May Knauer, who has discontinued treatment. Uh, she did that a while ago, but she is now under palliative care and feels very good about it. So prayers for her as she uh, navigates that journey. We lift up also Carolyn Street's son, Matt, who is having open heart surgery this week. So prayers for him and for his medical team. And we pray for those who are living alone or who are feeling isolated, especially this holiday weekend, those who are missing folks who can't be together. We remember those we love in assisted living facilities and also all of the caregivers in our lives. Are there, oh, and I do want to say a huge thank you to all the church staff and to our volunteers who make Easter happen. It's a very busy week in the church, and also a big thank you to all of their families, including my family, who was here late last night helping me finish setting up. So thank you um, to all of you. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning?
I want to ask for prayers for my friend Ashley's daughter, Gabby. She's three. She was hospitalized in Children's on Thursday. Um, they thought she was battling like some type of an infection. It started um, like as a UTI. It turns out she has four different viral infections. So there's no antibiotics for it. The treatment is just to let it run its course. Um, but they haven't been able to get her to eat or drink because her throat's sore and swollen, so she's on IVs right now. Mm -hmm. So just prayers for her little body to fight that off and get home soon. Kelly asked for prayers for little Gabby, who is three years old and hospitalized with a number of viral infections. Um, and so prayers for her that she'll, she'll start taking in food and water, prayers for her parents and for those caring for her. just asking for prayers um, there's a gentleman from our neighborhood Mark Stanley that passed away really suddenly and unexpectedly last Sunday um, so just prayers for his family and friends as they cope with his loss he was young too right like 50, his, yeah, 50. Yeah. so we pray for um, the family and loved ones of Mark Stanley who passed away very suddenly last week uh, in their grief I'd like to share a joy um, my sister and mother both have disabilities and it's hard for us to coordinate with um, health issues and we're all going to be able to celebrate it together today. So we're very excited. Yay. I just got goosebumps, Cindy. That's awesome. Yay. Cool. I wanted to thank everybody for your thoughts and prayers over the last few weeks. Uh, the silver lining was that we got to spend more time with our new grandson, Riot. So that was sort of cool or at least I did, and David got a little <laughs> extra on the end there. So thanks, everyone, for your prayers. Just some prayers for my brother, Bud Patton, who is having surgery on Friday to help repair his back. Thank you. You're welcome. We pray for Sharon's brother, Bud, as he prepares for surgery this week. I like prayer for healing for my uh, two knees and my uh, right foot in my heel area. I'm having trouble walking every day. Thank you, Dick. He prays for healing for his knees and his foot. and. You walk a lot, so healing. Yeah. Yeah, quick healing would be wonderful. Other joys or concerns this morning? Yeah, that's what, that's what healing does. Yep. Other joys or concerns today? Hearing none, then let us turn to God in prayer. God, when everything was dark and it seemed like the sun would never shine, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus this light that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection and continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter spirit of life, hope, and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of the spirit to others. We pray especially for your presence to be with those we have named here this morning, for those dealing with grief and heartache, for those dealing with injury and illness, for those who are watching their loved ones hurt. We thank you, God, also for all of the joys, for being able to gather together in worship, for baptism and babies and reunions. We thank you for flowers, for song, and especially for resurrection. And we pray now for your presence to those we lift silently before you.
on this Resurrection Sunday, O oh God. Fill us with your peace and your light and your hope and your joy. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and all of the prayers of our hearts, and hear us now as with one voice, united in praise of our risen Savior. We pray the prayer that he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as we sing our closing hymn together. This is an original hymn called Who Are You Looking For? There is music in the insert for those of you who are here, and the words are on the screen as well. The tune is This Is My Father's World. For the postlude today, Nancy will be playing uh, portions of the Hallelujah Chorus. So you are invited to stay and to remain risen and to celebrate Christ through that beautiful music. Also, kids, don't forget, if you finished your Easter egg hunt, you can see Mr. David, and he'll help you with your prizes. Um, and that could include some bigger kids, too, if you want. I don't know. As you leave this time of worship, dance, celebrate, sing, and shout for joy, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and he goes before us into the world of fear and pain. He has called us to bring the good news of healing and hope and resurrection. Go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Alleluia. Amen.